Welcome to the first episode of Grow Nation podcast. I'm your host Navjot and on this podcast we'll be talking to successful entrepreneurs who have made it big. We'll have deep conversations with them understanding their stories where they came from. Were they born with a special talent or their circumstances made them who they are today? Life is really good until you want things and you can't have it. In today's episode we have a special person that I have been following for a very long time. My true mission was to help as many people as possible. It has to start with helping myself. He was born in a war zone in El Salvador. His father went to the war and never came back because I never ever wanted my daughter to feel that way. His mother was put in the jail and from ages 2 to 5 he was in confinement away from the world. Mm. Remember my my first value was integrity mm. that my mom gave me. If it wasn't for the birth of my daughter I would not be here today right I would either be in jail or dead from becoming a father at the age of 17 to becoming a millionaire at the age of 21 to becoming almost bankrupt in his mid 20s and then becoming financially independent at the age of 30 his story is no less than a movie anybody can be rich wealth is long term for the last 16 years he has been inspiring and helping entrepreneurs like me invest in real estate and multifamily homes across north america he is none other than alfan Enzo Quadra, the founder of Well Genius. Alfonso, thank you so much for doing this. I have so many questions for you, so many, so many. Um, I appreciate you coming to Ottawa. You know, <laughs> I had to. I had to. Uh, I'll tell you a story, right? So uh, when I joined Well Genius, uh, before I joined Well Genius, I was watching you, and uh, I wanted to interview you. always and one of the small tiny best reasons yes i obviously wanted to learn as well but one of the tiniest reasons uh, for me joining well genius was i wanted to do this mm. so one of my very big objectives have been achieved today so thank you so much for oh, doing oh uh, it my pleasure and I, thank you for coming to to the event we had a good time absolutely and uh, we spent time in tampa as well absolutely so. <laughs> absolutely you know it's been a learning experience i did yeah. invest in the us yes yes um, yes with thomas so yeah, yeah you know uh, yeah yeah it, Yeah, it, it's just a very exhilarating experience, and we'll talk all about that because I really want to know, Alfonso. Like a lot of people say that uh, your past shapes who you are today. Um, so I, I, I would love to know, what is that one thing that I need to know, or an event that I need to know from your past to understand what you are doing right now? Well, there's a series of events, mm. right? So one event leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, mm -hmm. right? So the the first event uh would be probably between the ages of 2 to 5. Mm. So between the ages of 2 to 5, um I was not allowed outside. I was not allowed to interact with other kids. I was pretty much um uh living in captivity, right? And the reason for that is because I came from El Salvador, war-torn country. My mom was a journalist, mm. and um, she was an ethical journalist, meaning she wanted to write about the truths in the 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 injustice that was happening with our with our government. Uh, governments don't like that, mm. and so uh, eventually the office was uh, shut down, and uh, she was illegally detained and uh, brought to prison, where she was going to serve a forty-year sentence. So my grandparents, you know, took me and they kept me in hiding and they they changed my name and um uh, actually my name should have been Eduardo, <laughs> believe it or not, but uh they changed my name and and um ultimately um you know, they were afraid that the government would kidnap me or use me in a, in, in in as leverage uh, against my mom, right? So that event uh, I think has shaped uh my life because when you have when you are by yourself you know as a kid your imagination is incredible you know and and even though i was alone i had hundreds of friends in my imagination right um funny story one uh, one time so in back home this is what we do we bring chickens in the house and we we fat them we we mm -hmm. feed them and they get fat and then you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that happened right and so um this chicken then that brought you know I named it Rodrigo became my best friend <laughs> okay wow I would play with this chicken every mm -hmm. single day and uh I remember one day my grandmother grabbed me and uh, my grandfather grabbed the chicken <laughs> and how old uh, were you then I was must have been about four, right Four years old. I, so, because the question was, what has shaped me, right? Uh, you know, like all these. There's been a series of events, 
right, mm. that have uh, shaped the person who I am. Is that your earliest memory? Uh, no, I have earlier memories in that, but um, I mean, it was uh, it was about three years, and I remember playing. I remember having this. Um, incredible imagination like i uh you know i thought at one point i thought i was superman i jumped off a second story i landed on my head oh, no. like i mean my my mind has always been very creative mm. and ultimately you know my mom was given asylum to come to canada we were political okay. asylum seekers and we landed in montreal and um i was so uh, I was so happy and 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 fascinated with other kids. I would like hug other kids, kiss other kids, and I've always been fr from that moment. I've been a people person. I I love people. I can't be by myself. You know, a lot of people enjoy time on their own, right? But that could cause to some people uh, they could actually go in a very dark place as well. Sure. So sure. Uh, I know you were a kid. And yeah. probably you would not know what was your turnaround or what was that switch that you said that no, you want to be a people's person and not go inside of you yeah. into your own captivity. So, like, what was that? Well, that the, the thing was, it, I fascinated about being around people. I was fascinated about it. I was like, you know, like I would watch uh, television shows, uh, cartoons, and I would just, I would see kids playing. Right. And so that was my dream, you know, to play with other kids. And so when I came to Canada and you see all the kids, I just want to be around all the, like all these kids all the time. And I've always grown up that way. Like I wanted to I always want to be around people. Right. Covid was very tough for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a people person. When you put me in, in that captivity play, place, um, you know, it brought me back to when I was living in El Salvador, you know, like no friends. You can't talk to anybody. You can't go outside, you know. So um, I'm a very um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very in tune with people. Mm. I, I have um, I feel like I, I can feel someone. I can connect with them, I can be present with them, you know, and uh, I think those are some of my gifts, you know, as a result of that. Wow. So I, I never imagined that as a kid, between two to five, you can actually develop, you know, that, that yeah. particular trait yeah. uh, of yours. Yeah. Do you believe in privilege? Uh, what I mean by that is that, um, you know, like a lot of immigrants and your story is a little bit extreme, you mm -hmm. know, from that point of view, like one of the most extreme stories. But a lot of people who are born here, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people crib about, you know, the government, the taxes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were born here. So they were born with a certain amount of privilege. And I do, I mean, no disrespect to anyone, right? Oh, and... Um but finish, you, finish your yeah, question. Yeah, so, but do you think that, uh, you know, when you come from a darker place uh, versus someone who is born here and when you see them, you know, t talk shit about, you know, a lot of things, like, how do you react to that? Like, Yeah, so uh, so I, I basically let people be. Hmm. Um, people have their own mindsets. They have their own experiences. My darkest place uh, is my darkest place, but it's not the darkest place ever that someone has ever experienced. Hmm. Um, someone growing up in Canada could have gone into a, a dark place and it feels just the same as my darkest place, mm. you know? So I, I understand that the feeling is the same. Um, I think that um, uh, the Western world is very affluent mm. and, you know, back home, you know, especially where I come from, the, the priority for the majority of the people is survival, like where are we going to get food? You know, we need to put a roof over our heads. It's almost like you're holding a door, right? You're holding mm -hmm. a door, and behind that door, you have hunger, you have uh, crime, you have uh, uh, you have uh, where we, my kids are going to go to school. Can they go to school? All of these things that you're trying to hold back, right? In the Western world, we don't have those mm -hmm. problems, of course. At a very minute level, you do. But what happens is people somehow, I feel they need the struggle. Mm. And they people need to feel um, like they're marginalized, right? So everyone has a group. And, and, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we don't have those pr same issues that we do back home, like feeding yourself, feeding your family, you know, putting a roof over your head. So those are taken care of. The basic mm. needs are taken care of. And so the human need is now, 
it, it needs to ima- like create things because uh, we we need that hmm. struggle as a society, right? But but you know the, my my struggle always is um, that. how do you and and that goes for me as well you know i don't have a very dark past you mm-hmm. know i don't have a very strong why that i need to retire my parents because my parents are doing well on their own right mm-hmm. um i have not gone through a lot of pain in my life yeah. um so do you think that pain is necessary uh, or kind of a prerequisite yeah. to success or no, do you think well, there's more no the 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 journey of understanding your why it's a lifelong journey mm. right um for the most part most people go into uh um you know go into like something very superficial like i want to do i want world peace i want to save the children i want to you know stop world hunger or whatever and then that's my why that's what's going to drive me and at the very beginning any why will help you you need just you need to have something that you can hold on to right but if you do if you go deeper and deeper and deeper everyone has a motive like a like a motivation there's a core to everyone's why and why they why they're doing anything right it's it's like a driver right and you don't know that it's in you until you discover it right how do you do that it's it's work right so i i've i've, uh, I've done a lot of reading with si- uh, uh, books uh, from simon sinek mm-hmm. and he talks about the seven layers of why and so the why journey starts at peeling back the layers like an onion right and what happens uh, um when you when when you peel an onion you it it uh, you know it goes in your eyes and you cry but the idea is as you are peeling back these onions as you're peeling back the onion layers you're going deeper deeper into a more emotional state where it will make you cry right mm-hmm. it's 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 so powerful that you it's it's emotional right mm-hmm. when you discover these things there's a lot of things in your childhood that you don't even remember that you haven't even t- uh, maybe you blocked them out of your memory mm-hmm. you know for example when i was a kid so when i did this i went through this journey myself right okay. so for the longest time my why was always my kids mm-hmm. right i'm doing it for my kids um at 17 I became a father, mm. right? And uh, you know, that changed everything for my, you know, you asked me at the very beginning what were the series of events? Well, uh, you know, one was wartime. Uh the second one was uh trying to integrate into the education system which it it didn't fit. I didn't fit into the education system. Um ultimately getting frustrated and dropping out of high school and leaving home and then living on the streets. And so I had dark moments, but the life changing moment for me was the birth of my daughter when i was 17 and that gave me purpose that gave me a why it 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 did push me forward and for the longest time i've always said my kids my kids are my why but when i started digging digging and it doesn't it didn't work at first uh maybe my mind wasn't there maybe i wasn't um resonating with it cuz Of course, my kids are my why, right? And you said you struggled with the why mm. because you 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 haven't had trauma or you haven't had um Maybe. your parents are are good, everyone's good, everyone's feeling good, right? And um I believe you do have a why. Mm. You just don't know what it is, right? And so, you know, when I did this work of peeling back these onions, pe- peeling back the onion, and it happened during COVID. Uh like I said I'm a people person. Hmm. I love people. I want to be around people and um maybe those are distractions, you know? And so COVID, the only gift is the the uh, that I, it was forced on me to stop, slow down and reflect. And so through this reflection, I'm like, okay, maybe I should do this why thing again. But at this time I did it in front of the mirror. And um I looked at myself in the mirror. There's something powerful about looking at yourself in the mirror. you're you can stand in your truth right you can't lie to yourself you know Absolutely. uh and you might have to do this a few times but um for me you know after going th- through a few layers and I'll show you how this works so for example uh you have these goals these series of goals of anything everything you want to accomplish could be anything well why why do you want to do that okay my kids hmm. like okay your kids but why your kids well 
um, I don't want them to have to grow up the way I did. Okay? But why? Hmm. Okay? So then you go deeper and deeper and deeper. This is an exercise. Hmm. And you might have to do it, I don't know, a hundred times, you know, because I tried it before it didn't work, but for whatever reason, um, for whatever reason, it worked that day, right? And uh, I went really deep and it came down to when I was 12 years old, I asked my mom, where's my dad? And my mom said, your dad left during the war, never came back. Hmm. And I blocked this memory from my mind. So this is what I'm saying. Like there's memories that you don't even remember. Mm. They're blocked, but they're, they, they have affected and shaped your entire life. And um, I remember thinking when I was 12, I was like, if I had a son and there's a war, I don't want to take my son with me. And so I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? Why wasn't I good enough to, for my dad to take me with him? Hmm. And the second I realized that, that that was like the core why, I knew why when my daughter was born, something snapped in, inside of me. Because I never ever wanted my daughter to feel that way. In fact, it has shaped everything I've done. It's a main motivator in, in everything that I do. When I started business, my first business back uh, when I was 17, I was always inclusive with people, right? I was always helping people. I was always, I never ever wanted to, for anybody to feel like they're left behind, they're not good enough. And I've always been this person that is just, that, that just wants to uplift people. And um, that was the main motivator for everything in my life, right? Like why I started Wealth Genius, you know why? Um, you know why I'm the person I am. Why am I all over the all over mm. the country? You know, mm. I, I fly from place to place. Um, there's something driving me that is greater than myself, and it goes back to when I was 12 years old. The way I felt, I never want anybody to feel that way. So I've done everything to mm. to make sure that people feel included, and um, supported, guided, and no one no one should be left behind. Mm, that's that's very powerful but do you think that this weighs you down when you try to include everyone else mm -hmm. like you try to include as many people as possible but some people just can't yeah be included sure and sure do, do you do you, because of your past do you feel weighed down well how fast can you run with someone on your back mm. how fast can you run not very how fast can you run with two people on your back? Mm, worse. How about three? And so you can't carry anybody. That's what I learned a long time ago. I did try to carry people, you know, people that I grew up with. You know, I came from uh, uh, Ottawa housing. You know, I lived in, in, in uh, you know, in areas that, you know, people were not, um, you know, they were not wealthy. People had the di a different kind of mindset, you know. And ultimately, you know, I didn't want to leave people behind. But if, but if I wanted to help anybody, if my true mission was to help as many people as possible, it has to start with helping myself. Mm -hmm. Alfonso loves you, it's on the cup. Alfonso loves you, came from at the very beginning loving myself. Mm -hmm. I can't love anybody if I don't love myself. I can't help anybody if I don't help myself, right? So before all of this, first I had to build my my, I have to build my business, I have to build my portfolio. And then basically the way it is, it's like, okay, I'm running, I'm running. If I look to my right, I look to my left. If you're there, good, we'll run together. But I can't carry people, mm. right? Everybody's gotta, you know, or else we're, we're not, the mission will be stalled. Everyone wants to achieve success, right? So yes. everyone wants to run. And yeah. probably they are, but yeah. the direction could be different. Yes. You know, or it could be uh, going, running towards a place that you don't even know it's dark. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like from that point of view, when you see people running, but not in a direction that they should because yeah. of all your, you know, like y y you have experienced a lot and with that comes wisdom. Yeah. And when you see people running in the wrong direction or in a direction that's not good enough for them or they're you know they're not going to their potential 
why do you think that is like why do you think people run but not fast enough or mm. not in the right direction yeah i mean it's a good it's a it's really it's a good question i think because you know there's so much information out there um and i think people become addicted to information and addicted to uh doing things but maybe they're not achieving anything right um i always tell people um you know what like you got to take action without without action nothing happens but then what action do you take right mm. and so this is where you know communities or education tr- educational tracks that's what helps right like i can go to university every single day every day mm. but if i don't enroll into a program and have a direction i will never have a degree mm. right and so ultimately um that's what wealth genius was created to give people guidance so they can run towards the right way you can spend all your time doing all of the wrong things <laughs> mm. no and the truth is uh you don't have to reinvent the wheel right like someone has done this before this is why um you know people say oh it looks like wealth genius just came out of the blue you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just like all of a sudden like there's wealth genius no this is like 27 years of my life's work put into this one platform mm. right the companies that i've built the real estate that, that i've bought we're talking about over 20 years of experience mm. and so people get to tap into my experience they don't need to reinvent the wheel they don't need to make the mistakes that i made mm. right and so i i'm offering that on a in a platform in a in a tangible product that people can have the other side is someone said well i want to try it on my own i want to make my own mistakes i'm like okay yeah <laughs> you know what i mean no. there's no 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 one's going to no one's going to stop you but ultimately um if you don't if you're not determined enough hmm. if your why is not strong enough you're going to give up you're going to say this doesn't work you know because it's you're 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 like it's it, number one it's hard on your own yeah. right do, have you ever had a gym membership yeah do you have, do you have ever had a, a personal trainer yes i do right now because yeah. i hated the gym yeah because i was doing exactly. it alone exactly exactly yeah. but now you're accountable to someone yes. you know coaching mentoring all of this stuff you know it sounds hokey pokey mm. but it works you know like everyone that's en- achieved anything in life has always had a coach a mentor and this is why people run people do people watch people read but nothing happens mm. right and so the 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 idea of having a mentor or a coach a community guidance uh education is so you're running towards the right, the right direction it's like time compression Yeah. right so you can either take 20 years to figure it out or someone you know tap me it doesn't have to be me hmm. right i'm not the only person out here yeah. but like connect with some sort of education some sort of coaching some sort of community some sort of mentorship and you're going to see results hmm. so i'll i'll give you my experience with mm-hmm. coaching yeah. and uh, probably you know that would unfold a lot of you you talked about 96% of people thinking yeah. a certain way um so i always thought that i know enough because i didn't know what i didn't know you know for a long yeah. time right yeah. i was I, i was you know doing well in my work uh, but i didn't know i can make more money i really thought that people who make money they do it the wrong way uh, you know i everything that's there in rich dad poor dad and the poor dad advice that's what, that was me when i re- uh, read rich dad poor dad i was like it's a scam mm-hmm. <laughs> that was my first instance back in 20, 2009 or 2010 yeah. um so i did not want to take coaching i had mentors and you know like my mama ji was my mentor my yes, family yes, but yes. you know like i i did not want to take coaching because there was something stopping me yeah. maybe it was fear of uh, doing something and failing or it's fear of judgment mm-hmm. or it's fear of uh, you know maybe success mm-hmm. uh, you know I, i know that i can if i quit my so but there there were so many hurdles in my head that did not let me take the next step and when well genius i i got to know about well genius it was a no brainer for me because i had developed that you know mentality of being a student yes uh, because i have failed in my businesses because i did not take coaching like 
do everyone have to fail and then realize how how do you make someone realize that you need a coach yeah so some people it's it's, it's automatic they're like i'm just going to i'm not going to try to figure this out on my own i'm just going to i'm just going to move forward yeah. right um sometimes it's like maybe how the, how you grew up maybe your parents like i mean your, your parents uh have a, a big influence over you mm. right i mean they're the ones that were there at the very beginning molding you you know what i mean shaping your ideas and everything that how you're going to see life and you know most parents okay and 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 um i want you to real i want you to think about this when your when your kids leave the house what does every single parent say to their kids what we we'll say 96% of the parents be careful be careful and so that means the world is bad is out to get you mm. right everything's a scam and so that's programming we're pro- programming our kids and and what if before our kids left the house we said look for opportunities mm. they're out there right what if we said that to our kids as a society right mm-hmm. like everyone is now looking for instantly looking for opportunities then being careful wow that's powerful <laughs> that 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 actually defines why uh, me and a lot of people yeah. always see an opportunity as a threat first yes and then only after they cross a hurdle they're like mm, that makes sense yeah right yeah that's that's powerful yeah going back to your parents right so your mom was an ethical journalist so you have yeah. seen you know a lot you know a lot of that you know yeah. and and you do remember a lot of that so how does how has that shaped you in what you are doing today like is there yeah. any influence well well one um like my mom was a strong woman mm. right i mean she was a um uh, uh, not only she was a, not only was she a journalist but uh, she was she she owned her own news agency so before in the 70s 60s um you know you wouldn't have correspondence in different uh, uh markets what you would do is the news would just buy the news from news agencies okay. so my mom would have a new she had her own news agency she was producing news for the world right because there was at this point you have a uh a civil war and mm. you know the you know all the outlets are they need to buy the news so my mom she's 411 mm. okay <laughs> uh a woman in latin america right so in latin america you have machismo right and so uh, machismo is like you know the man it's a man man oriented mm. and uh even the language is uh you have masculine and feminine and you know that it's it's um it, it is what it is that's how the that, that's how the country is and so for a woman in the 70s to be in a position of power uh and you know my mom's a a, a feminist and you know she's she's brought me up that way right so you know that that has also shaped me because i'm like okay everyone uh there's there's everyone needs a chance everyone uh has the opportunity to shine and i was blessed with two daughters mm. right and then i want them to be i don't want them to be like me i want them to be better than me right and my 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 legacy will continue on through them but they will make it better right they will make things better and so that has shaped uh the the person i am the her her uh her biggest um i guess her legacy that has been um transferred to me is integrity. She couldn't teach me about business. She couldn't teach me about real estate or how to manage money, uh credit, mm. you know, um how to have the 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 wealthy mindset. I I didn't learn any of that. I had to learn that on my own and I had to change certain paradigms. But the gift was she gave me um values that I live I live by today. and integrity mm. right having integrity being a, a person of integrity being a person of your word right um if i say i'm going to show up somewhere you know like you 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 see the weekend that I, you were on my weekend yeah. right um today i you know i woke up this morning and i was like oh you know like it, it was just i was just i was just drained from yeah. the weekend right but i gave my word to you mm. that i'd be here this morning right and so my 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 word means everything right mm. and 
the way anybody does anything is the way they will do everything. Mm. And so that has been a gift that's been given to by my mom, right? That in, the integrity. Um, and then, of course, there was other things that maybe I didn't want to. I, I don't want it. I didn't want to participate. You know, the that poor mindset. Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone's after you and all that. But um, I think from our parents, we take the good, and we can leave the bad. Hmm. Hmm. But that requires a lot of uh, talking to yourself, like you said. In oh, the personal development yeah. uh, is huge. That self work. You know, I'm I'm 46 years old right now. You know, like if I can go back to when I was 15. I had no confidence. I had no self-worth. I didn't believe in myself. I thought everybody's out to get me. You know, everybody's, uh, you know, everyone is uh, has an agenda. You know, that that's kind of the mindset that I had, you know. And this idea that you can build wealth, that people could be wealthy, I was like, that's impossible, right? Uh, anytime I ever, I've ever talked about it, people have said, ah, no, that's not for you. You're not going to be, you know. Even the mindset of like, you know, um, I played a lot of basketball and said it, it had to grow, right? And you have to expand the mindset. You have to do a lot of work on yourself to get to the point where you can even believe that it's possible for you. Because if you don't believe, nothing will happen. Even that you can say it, like, I'm going to do it. But if you don't really believe it nothing is going to really happen nothing will materialize until you do the work and you start um, learning about yourself and I had to learn about myself and it's still a study hmm. I'm still studying it's a, it's, it's a big book <laughs> yeah no and, and so every day you just got to be you got to be better you got to do the self work people that are lazy there uh, won't progress and they'll wonder why hmm. right so when you were 17, uh, you had your first daughter. Uh, is that around the same time that you started your first business? Or? It was a result of my, uh, my... Look, I was in a really dark place. Mm. I always tell my daughter, her name is Talia. I have two daughters. Mm-hmm. Talia, 27, and Alicia, 17. Mm. You know, I mean, I was a different person. I was a different parent for both mm. for both of my daughters. But I always tell her, you're my guardian angel. Right, because she pretty much came and saved my life. If it wasn't for the birth of my daughter, I would not be here today. Mm. Right, I would either be in jail or dead, you know, or maybe, or maybe just like uh, somewhere, you know, working a, a um, you know minimum wage job, or you know, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the how person did, I am. How did that turn your life around? Like you found a vibe. Yeah. I didn't. What did you do? I had no idea. Obviously, we don't want to promote for young people to have kids in order yeah, to find out. Absolutely. <laughs> that's <laughs> that, not what we're that, doing. that goes without saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what was that action that you took? Yeah, so what happened? So look, happened. so, you know, uh, when when my uh, my ex, my, my, my daughter's mom, um, told me she was uh, pregnant, I was like, uh oh. Oh boy, you know, I'm 17, but it doesn't really sink in. Like you're 17, you're about to have Mm -hmm. a kid. Nothing really sinks in, right? And um, we didn't have proper communication. I didn't have a cell phone, right? Um, And uh, she went to labor overnight. They brought her to the hospital and uh, my daughter was born, Mm -hmm. right? And then... In the morning, there was I got a, uh, a I had a beeper. You remember beepers? Okay. Do you yeah. remember beepers? Uh, pagers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Pages, so I got yeah. a page, and okay. then I had to call. You know, I had to call yeah, yeah, from the payphone, yeah. and the, and because she was premature, mm. she was supposed to she was due in October, but she came in September, mm. and so I get the I I, I pay. They're like, oh, uh, come come and meet your daughter. What? Okay, I didn't even have money for the bus. Mm. I had to walk to the hospital, right? And so I walked, and uh, I'm 17. I'm 17 years old. What do I know about anything? Mm. You know, I'm just, I'm going there, but I, it still hasn't hit me, you know? And then um, I go into the hospital room, 
and um, she's in this incubator, right? Mm -hmm. Tiny, she's so tiny, she's like mm -hmm. this small. And um, the nurse says, do you want to hold her? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> 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 what if I drop her? <laughs> right? And uh, she's like, no, no, you, 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 this is your daughter, you, you, you want to hold her? And so she opened up the incubator. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. They're gonna put like I, I had no I have no experience with kids. I don't have any brothers or sisters. Course, yeah. I never had I, I, like I never had access to babies, mm -hmm. you know? And um, you know, the first thing I noticed is how tiny she was. Mm -hmm. And it and it just scared me. Like, I'm not responsible enough to have a, a kid right now, no. you know. <laughs> what am I gonna do? If you buy uh, anything, right? This this media wall. It comes with instructions, yeah. you know? Anything in life, you buy this phone, the camera, the laptop, any everything in life comes with instructions except for kids. Mm -hmm. there's, no there's no instructions. Here you go, don't mess their life, you know? <laughs> and um, so the, the nurse puts the baby in my arms and I just started crying, you know? It, every, it just, everything came, everything came together, my whole life, my experiences, and I was like, oh, hold on a second. It's all about this person right now. It's all about her life. What all the decisions that I make don't only impact me, but it impacts this other person, this other human being. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I remember like I, it was like surreal, and I put her back in the incubator, you know, and then I went into the bathroom, and then I looked myself into the mirror, and I said, Alfonso you have to change and so the vision that i had at that day i because i could i was like what am i going to do what how is this going to happen um i said i want i want my daughter to say one day you know uh my dad owns the building not cleans the building mm -hmm. that was the vision that i had that day in the hospital you know in the bathroom talking to myself and uh, I didn't know how that was going to happen. I didn't know all the things that were going to unfold. The first thing that I did was I went back to high school. The reason I went back to high school, I never wanted my daughter to say, hey, you didn't go to school, so I'm not going to go to school. Mm -hmm. So boom, I went back to high school. Um, I got a job, right? $5 an hour. That was minimum wage back mm -hmm. then, right? It was at a restaurant. Hated it. Miserable. My first paycheck. So I'm going to school full time. I'm going. I'm working full time. My first paycheck for two weeks was like roughly about two hundred bucks. And so I said, "What am I gonna do? I got this family. I got my daughter. How, how am I? How in the world am I gonna, uh, mm. you know, be able to do this? Finish school and uh, take care of my my kid." And so I took the two hundred dollars. I went to. I was in Toronto on Young Street. And there's all these street vendors. And so I looked at jeans and T-shirts, and I'm like, what if I buy a few of these? Mm. And the, the, the guy was like, well, if you buy a few, I'd give it to you for $20 a pop for the jeans. So I bought all these jeans and T-shirts with my, my, my first paycheck. Then I went back to high school, and, um, you know, I had them in my locker, and I would talk to kids, you know, during the breaks or whatnot, come see me at the locker. And I sold my very first... Uh, pair of jeans, okay, uh, for sixty dollars that I bought for twenty. I made a forty dollar profit in ten minute transaction. When you make forty dollars in ten minutes, you can't go back to working five dollars an hour. <laughs> for sure. And so I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pursue profits for the rest of my life, right? Um, and so that's kind of how in the business started mm -hmm. at 17, right? I was just became the I became the the kid with the backpack, always with something to sell in the backpack. I just became this merchant, mm. right? Jeans, uh, hats, t-shirts, and you know what? It was enough for me to continue to, um, you know, go to school, and also take care of my uh, take care of my daughter and my responsibilities, mm -hmm. right? You know, but it was like. But I didn't really know what was going, like where it was going to end up. It was just like a hustle mm. at the very beginning, mm. you know. You were still surviving. I was surviving. Yeah. I was surviving. You know, I know. So all I knew was, I need, if I got to pay the rent, mm. I got to figure out how to get 
Mm. 400 bucks, mm. right? How am I going to get 400 bucks? Well, I'm going to sell mm. this. Mm. You know what I mean? If I can buy this for, you know, a uh, dollar, I can sell it to you for two, mm. you know? And, and that's kind of how my mindset was. And I knew that profits, when people talk to me, and I didn't even know the word profit, mm. you know? I didn't even know the word entrepreneur. Mm. I didn't know the word entrepreneur. To this day, I don't even know how to spell it. I'm, I always get it wrong at the end, like R-E-E-R, I'm not sure. And so... Um, at 19, my vision was I wanted to open my own physical location, mm. right? Uh, a, a legitimate store, a legitimate business. When I, I so I graduated, I graduated high school, and then I had this dream. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And people are like, oh, that's not going to work. Um, it was in it was a hip hop store, and so they're like, hip hop is just a fad. Right, it's not gonna last. You know what I mean? Uh, no one in Ottawa has any fashion. No one cares. You know, and so some people said it's not gonna work because there's no hip hop stores in, in in Ottawa. And I'm like, that's why it's gonna work because there is no hip hop stores in Ottawa, right? right. And so <clears throat> um, I talked to all these all these people, and it turned out that I got a few people on board. They put in 200, 300, 500. It's my first joint venture. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so I raised $2,700. Mm -hmm. And so I took the $2,700 and I went to New York from street vendors. Um, we spent all the money. We came back. We opened the, the first physical location with $2,700. By the end of that year, we had grossed over a million dollars in sales. By the end of the second year, we had locations all over across Canada. By the time I'm 21, this now I have a nationwide business, locations all across Canada, wow. and making millions. I'm 21 years old, mm. and uh, I fell in love with being an entrepreneur. That, at that moment, it's like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. I love the control of my time. No one could tell me to go into work, but I was the first one there. Mm. No one could tell me I have to clock out at this time because I was the last one there. And that was my first experience running a, a major um, corporation. And the, the gift that I had was that I didn't have many skills. Mm. I had the skill to inspire people, connect with people. So I would attract all the right people bookkeepers, accountants, all the right people to bring them on the team to do what they love to do. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to have all of the answers as long as you can lead people in the right way and attract all the people that have the right answers. And so that's, that was my, that was the first business. Mm -hmm. And um, it came, it came as a result of my daughter being born. Mm -hmm. And I also heard that you almost went bankrupt. Was this, yeah. this, this business or <laughs> well, <laughs> what was, was? Well, that was a, that was a, that that was the same thing, right? I mean, I was 21 years old, but I have no financial literacy. This was not taught in my home, mm. in my, my in my household, right? No one talked about uh, credit. No one talked about how to manage your credit, how to manage your 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 um, finances. All I know was I've been broke all my life and the influences that I had or that I could see were in movies and um, music where anytime people have money they they show how much money they have and that's what success is success is and when I'm when I was 21 I thought that I had to show how much money I had at that point how successful I was and so I went through this period in my time where I like blew all the money Right, like I, mm -hmm. I bought cars, uh, jewelry, um, trips, uh, you know, all of these things. And so, by the time I was 24, I was negative a million dollars. Oh, right. And um, it was hard. It was hard. the The market has shifted. Uh, in 2001, um, we had, well, two th early 2000s, 2000, uh, early 2000s, we had the uh, tech bubble burst. Right. Uh, and then we had 9/11, and then shortly after 9/11, uh, you start seeing you start seeing that the market sh is changing. Now we introduce e-commerce, mm. 
competition, all of these things that um, ultimately um, I wasn't experienced enough. In my mind at 21, I thought that this money would be coming in forever, forever. <laughs> right? And um, the reality is um, I was a consumer. And so I, 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 I spent everything and negative a million bucks, yeah. right? And so by the time I, I realized what was going on and my accountant said, you know, you're in big trouble. And, um, you know, the recommendation was that I should go bankrupt, right? Mm. Because certain people had, um, certain people had uh, left, stores were closing, employees were leaving, people were stealing, uh, certain um, suppliers were, were um, cutting me off, right? And so it was like, I was in a tough spot. And so I thought about bankruptcy. Now I'm 24 years old, right? And I'm like... I messed up here. Like, what, mm. what happened? And um, I started to, I said, I got to change something. So I started to learn about successful people. I started to read autobiographies. I started to study wealth and I reached that poor dad, mm. think and grow rich. And then it just exposed me to all of this material. And then what I realized that, whoa, I was a consumer. I should have been taking all those profits and reinvesting those profits. Mm. But I blew those profits on stuff that depreciates, mm. right? And so, and then, I, and then when I was reading about all these wealthy people, I realized that all of them have real estate. And I, what I want to do, I'm not going to go bankrupt. I'm going to go back and fight for my business. And I was going to go back to the way I started, you know, when I was, you know, young 19 years old working nine to nine seven days a week and i was gonna i was gonna go back and uh build what was mined right not that there's anything wrong with someone going bankrupt yeah. but i felt it was too easy mm -hmm. remember my my first value was integrity mm -hmm. that my mom uh um gave me and I, I i don't i didn't feel right about um taking all this money and blowing it you know, mm. borrowing money and blowing it, and they're just saying, oh, sorry, guys, I can't pay you back. Mm. And so I went back nine to nine, seven days a week to rebuild my company, no credit, no income, and I sold everything, right? And the one thing that made money was my house. Mm. I bought a house when I was 21. And so that money is, I said, okay, I'm going to use this to build my real estate empire. So nine to nine, I'm working on my business, rebuilding my business. 9.01 to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I'm working on my real estate. Mm -hmm. And there is, it's true, there's power and urgency, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if there's urgency, your back is up. I had no income, no credit. I had to make it work, right? And so uh, I kind of went through this transition of mindset at 24 and, um, you know, it took me about a year to recover from going from being a negative a million dollars to now the, the, the my, my company's in the black. But in the meantime, that year, I bought 11 properties. Mm. Right. And now I knew that all of the profits, I was going to just push it push it towards real estate, you know? And then I started working with other people and we started building the 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 the, the the portfolio, when 2009 came, 2008, 2009, um, in Canada, we didn't experience a crash, but it was right. a correction. But in the in the multifamily space, it was all, um, you know, there was no money available. So that by this time, I'm ready. I'm already mm. ready, and I was able to capture all the opportunities during that time to take my portfolio 10x from where it was. And, though, and then I've never stopped ever since. Mm. When I was 30, I sold the company, and then I just did uh, real estate full time. Like mm. this is what I did. For, like you know, I was a real estate investor. Mm. Mm. So if I were, you know, a lot of the times you talked about the drive was there. You need you need something, you know, to propel you. There's power and urgency, right? Yeah. What would you tell uh, people? Who don't have that agency let's say you know they are earning hundred thousand dollars let's say two hundred thousand dollars yeah um they are paying a mortgage now interest rates are high so they are feeling the pinch of yeah. that they think that they can do it better uh, but there's no urgency let's say you know i was um, a plant in your house yeah 
and you're sitting with your daughters. There's no urgency, you know, like as such for your daughters to do really well in life. There's no urgency, yeah. right? Because yeah. the basics are covered. Like what advice would you give to a lot of those people who think they can do better, but there's no urgency or your daughters? Uh, you get it. Like, first of all, it's not a requirement for people to pursue wealth. You don't have to. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't think it's for everyone. If you are happy where you are, if you're content, if you're truly content and you enjoy what you do and you you make enough money to survive and that fulfills you, hmm. then just turn off this this podcast. Yeah. No need to even, tr like, there's no need. If you don't need it. What if you're lying to yourself? I don't that? need it because it's, money it's, brings. It's possible. But for the people that are watching this program and they're truly content hmm. and they're truly fulfilled, right? Um, then there's no need to try. Hmm. You know, like, you're good. Hmm. Life is good. You're fulfilled. Because life is about fulfillment, hmm. right? My belief is in expansion. Hmm. If you're expanding, you're growing. If you're expanding, you're growing. And if you're growing, that brings fulfillment. Hmm. People can find it in sports, right? Some people some people don't care about making any money whatsoever. And they find that fulfillment in working out. Hmm. And they, 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 they're fascinated with it. They're addicted to it. It releases endorphins. And all they do is like they work out and... You know, every day their bicep, they measure the bicep, they, they go on the scale and then they, 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 they gain one pound and one inch on the bicep and that brings them that mm. fulfillment. And if you're that person, you're on the right track, mm. right? Because life is about fulfillment. That fulfillment is going to make you happy, right? And so the drive comes from wanting to be fulfilled and, and expand expand more of who you are whatever that is some somebody's going to be extremely spiritual right and they they have a need to uh expand that and talk to people get people involved in 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 whatever it is that they're doing get people to see that see things their way and then that, that brings them fulfillment right mm. and so the pursuit of wealth you know you have to get to a point where you have to want it Mm. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to come to you if you don't respect it. Mm. Right. And for my, for my kids, their entire life, I've told them, this is what it is, real estate. This is where I came from, mm. but they came, they grew up here in Canada. Their yeah. life is good. Yeah. Right. Life yeah. is good until it's not. Life is really good until it's not. Life is really good until you want things and you can't have them. Life is really good until you want to take trips and you can't afford them. And so um, even though I've tried to tell my, my, my eldest daughter is, is, is now involved in real estate, but I didn't push it on her. She had to want it. She had to earn it herself. And it wasn't until she needed it that everything changed because I've always tried to, you know, in, uh, encourage her to learn about uh, real estate. And I tell, you know, I can, I can drill it into someone hmm. until... One day she came back and she said, dad, working sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, oh. Now you're talking my language. Yeah, now. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let me come. I have another way. Hmm. Right. But she had to want it. She had to pursue it, you know. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's kind of neat. Um, so one of my, my friends, Jewish guy, and um, he married this non-Jewish girl, but uh, if if you're gonna marry non-Jewish, they have to convert. Mm, okay. Okay. And so they went to the synagogue. Uh, she went to see the rabbi, and she knocked on the door. The rabbi opens the door, and he says, uh, "Yeah, can I help you?" She's like, "Yeah." So I'm marrying my husband, and so like I'm here to convert. Boom! He shuts the door. Mm. You know, and she's like, "Oh!" Starts crying. Goes back home, and he's like, oh, they don't want me. And then he's like, "No, no, no. That's normal." You know. Because you got to really want it. So mm -hmm. you got to go back a few times. So she went back a few times. They, sh they, they slammed the door. And then eventually they're like, okay, we'll, we'll let you in. Right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, unless you really, unless this is, this is like, 
it's like a burning desire, right? Or something can wake up or something doesn't hurt bad enough. There's a story of the, the old hound dog. Hmm. The, there's a hound dog on the porch and the owner's right there sitting on a, on a chair. There's someone walking by and the hound dog is doing this. And the, the, guy, the guy is like walking by and is like, what's, what's wrong with your dog, dude? He's like, he's like, what do you mean? Well, the dog is doing this. Oh, my dog? Oh, that's nothing. He's just sitting on a nail. <laughs> he's like, what? He's sitting on a nail? Why doesn't he just get up? Well, it doesn't hurt bad enough. Hmm. Right? And so the majority of society are sitting on a nail. And if it doesn't hurt bad enough, nothing will happen. But if you go underneath the porch and you grab a hammer and boom, drive that nail into the into the backside of that of that dog, that dog's gonna get up, hmm. right? And so, you know, you have this thing where people need to hit rock bottom or something needs to happen. Hmm. And so, you know, that's how humans are, right? Because the society is promoting that. Society rewards average. And the, the, the majority of people are just, like, they just strive for average so they get there, right? That's, that's, the, that's the American dream, mm. you know? Get yourself a house, car, visa card, you know, instant life, boom, you know? Mm. You can't do that back home. <laughs> mm. Back home... You got to survive, yeah. right? And so that's part of the Western world where it's like so affluent that everyone is just average. Things are uncomfortable. They hate their job. Mm. You know, they, they hate this. They hate that. But it doesn't hurt bad enough mm. for them to change anything, right? Mm. They have to want it. Someone has to want it for it to for something to change which goes back to the why yeah right that's how yeah. you know that and, the, 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 and that's a, and that's a that's a, a lot of work hmm. some people are not willing to put in the work hmm. some people you know are not willing to do the pu push-ups hmm. you know what i mean hmm. you can't hire somebody else to do your push-ups no, you know absolutely. what I mean? Yeah, I wish we could. If I give you money to do my push-ups, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes so, sense. you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, I can help as many people as I can, mm. right? I can't carry anybody, Yeah. you know? I can guide, I can run, whoever's with me, it's with me, let's do it together. I can support, I can guide. I've created this community that has all, everything that you need to, for you, someone to be successful, but it doesn't work if you don't Sometimes. work, Yeah. right? It works only if you do, Yeah. only if you want it, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, I don't know how to change it anymore, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, you know, other than I continue to go from city to city, I go on YouTube, I'm on podcasts, I continue to share the ideas, mm. and I'm hoping to flip a few. Mm. I don't know. My job is not to figure out who who's going to listen and who's not going right. to listen. My job is to continue to plant the seed. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What's the difference between rich and wealthy? Well, anybody can be rich, you know? Especially, you, you're especially, a basketball player, you make money, boom, you're yeah, rich, right? Yeah. Wealth is long term, right? Mm -hmm. Wealthy, and wealthy uh, is in all categories of life, you know? Okay. It's, it, it's, if you just have money, you're, you're rich. Mm. But if you have uh, good relationships, if you, if you have time, if you are healthy, if you, uh, if, if you um, can travel and you, you like that's wealth, right? Mm. Some people they're 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 rich, but that's all they have. Mm. You know, wealthy is the accumulation of assets that are going to create time for you and the next generation, right? So there's different levels of wealth, but ultimately, in my mind, it's like being truly wealthy means that you are wealthy in all of these different categories of life, not just money. Money is one part of it. Hmm. But I tell people all the time, you can have it all. You don't have to just pursue money and that's it, that's all. You can pursue spirituality, social contribution. Because the, the idea of freedom and time is so you get to be more, you can be fulfilled. Hmm. And the only way you're going to be fulfilled is by doing something you 
that you can help, you can support, you can change things, hmm. right? Surround yourself with people who are better than yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's wealth to me. That, that's a. It's a very different de definition, hmm. and um, you know, not just trading your time for money, right? Someone hmm. can can be rich and they're still trading their time for money, right? Hmm. No, for sure. Now I call this the fast four, the last four questions that I'll ask you. Um, you can answer them in yeah. one sentence, or you can take you know a little bit of time. But um, what's the best advice that you can give anyone who is watching the channel right now? The best advice that I could give someone is look at look at the people you surround yourself with. Mm. Okay, take inventory of the ideas because people's lives are a direct reflection of the expectations of their peer groups. Mm -hmm. Change your peer groups, change your lives. Mm -hmm. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future, mm -hmm. right? And so if you're hanging around people that do not have the results that you're looking for, you'll just get more of what they have. Mm -hmm. Jim Rohn uh, said, um, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You have the average health, the average relationships, the average finances, the average everything, mm -hmm. right? So that means that you're impacted by your surroundings, the people you decide uh, to to spend time with. Mm. Those people are directly impacting your results. So the very first thing that someone has to do is take inventory on the people that are around them. And anybody that has influenced them in a, in, a, in a negative way, I would eliminate those people as fast mm. as possible and replace it with really good quality people that have the results that you're looking for. What about family? <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> this is what I tell people. Love your family. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Love your family. You don't have a choice, but choose your peers mm. because with your peers you have a choice mm. got it and what's the and you, i'm sure you have had a lot of bad advices as well what's the worst advice that you have seen someone get or you got well someone talked to me about um working too hard one time okay you know someone says uh someone told me like oh you work too hard you 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 why why do you work so much you know why do you work what do you why do you work so much and i started thinking about that that's maybe i am working so too much you know what i mean i started to question myself mm. and i had to i had to check myself i'm like no 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 i love what i do you know the word work it's it's a confusing word because you're doing you have you know the function of doing an activity but if you're doing something you love this is not work, mm. right? But work period is good, right? If we just if no one worked, what are we what are we gonna do, right? I mean, this is what this is gonna. Be, I mean, the world needs this. It's yeah. it, it's a it's a it, it's it brings fulfillment. I was in Greece with my wife, and um, you know we went to the 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 resort, and everyone there is like. 50, 60, 70 years old. We're, we're the youngest people there. And people are like, uh, you know, why did you come here? I, you know, like we just decided to come here. And uh, why did you come here? Well, back in 1955, I told my wife that I'd bring her to Greece. And here I am, you know. And by 8, 8 p.m., they're like, <sighs> these people are. <laughs> and I'm, I was telling my wife, I'm like, these people look miserable. Like, Ugh. And then we went to the market. And in the market, there was all these people. It's like it was Greece, and they're trying to sell you stuff. And and I'm like, I'm like, look, hon, look how much fun they're having, mm. right? They might not even remember it, right? But the reason they're having so much fun is because they're working, mm. right? And that working, it, it fills people up inside. You know, even if you have a fantasy that you want to uh, never work another day in your life, you're gonna find something to do. Mm. Where are you going to find fulfillment? You need that. There's a, that's a need, right? Even after the robots take our jobs, we still have to figure out Absolutely. what to do with our time. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, you know, someone told me, hey, you work too much. And I thought, this is not really my friend. 
<laughs> you need to change. <laughs> yeah, like if, who, 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 who you don't part. know what I'm doing. You don't yeah. know how I run my life. You know, I woke up this morning. Yeah, you know what? I was tired. I did, had a big weekend. I'm, 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 and before then, I was in another event and another mm. event. But I couldn't, I couldn't fathom doing anything else. Mm. You know, I, I was retired at 30 years old. I could, I, I was financially free at 30 years old. I didn't have to work another day in my life at 30 years old you know and so i'm here because this brings me fulfillment and if you tell me I, i'm working too much you're not my friend mm, makes sense <laughs> um if you were made the president of the world for one day <laughs> i don't want that responsibility <laughs> I, for sure I don't want that. let's say you have that yeah, yeah right what's that one rule that you would pass Whew. that the entire world has to oh, follow. Oh, that you're putting a lot of responsibility on yeah. me, right? You're putting a lot of responsibility on me. The first the first rule that I would pass is to change the education system. Mm. It should be based on skills, whatever skills and interests people have, they should pursue those skills. Mm. It shouldn't be one box for everyone. And so if I could uh, if I was the president of the world, my first mandate would be Let's change the education system in the entire world, so it's so it, we can we can harness the skills of everyone in the world and let them pursue that mm. what they love, what they want to do, what fulfills them. No, oh, that's that's beautiful. Last one. If you were to, these are tough questions. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> if if you were to take someone out for lunch or mm -hmm. dinner. And you could choose. You had one wish, and you could choose anyone, dead or alive. Uh, who would that be, and why? Elon Musk. Okay. Yeah. Why? Elon Musk. I I really respect the vision, hmm. right? Um, I really admire, and I'm fascinated with people that can look not just outside the box, but way outside hmm. the box. Like these are visionaries, right? Elon Musk has a, a goal to to put people on Mars, right? And um, you know that is to me that's a that's a visionary, mm. right? He might not even be alive mm. to see his full uh, vision come together, but I think that as a as a as a as a species we have the responsibility to continue to explore what else is out there, mm -hmm. right? When, uh, you know, 500 years ago, whatever, um, we thought we were on, on a flat planet, mm. right? And we'd fall over the edge, right? And so someone had to explore, you know, and it, you know, people had to explore and figure out, oh, no, wait, the planet is round, right? And I feel that's the way we are right now we we don't know even what exists out there yeah right and i think it's a, our responsibility to to continue to explore that human need that human curiosity we need to continue to 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 grow and build and see what else is out there we, we're going to find out a lot about ourselves mm. so elon musk I have so much, so many questions. Hmm. You know what I mean. So if if I could have any lunch or dinner with someone, and ask a bunch of questions, it would be Elon Musk. What would be the most curious question that you can ask him? I would ask him, like, what's his why? Hmm. Like, what drives him to want to put people on Mars? Because hmm. that's a re that's a big goal, hmm. right? He wants to put a colony on Mars, hmm. right? Like a hundred thousand. And he once said that my grave, I want my grave to be in Mars on Mars. Yeah, exactly. That's, so that's, so I want to know why. Yeah. Like what what was the like? And maybe maybe he hasn't he doesn't know why. Maybe I would do that work with him hmm. <laughs> and yeah. help him discover that why. <laughs> <laughs> Alfonso, this was amazing. I think a lot of people would be um, motivated in the right direction. I think motivation is also directional. So yeah. I think a lot of people, you flipped, even if you flipped one life today, yeah. I think this podcast would be a success. And I am, I hope you agree with that. Uh, so it was amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, brother, uh, congratulations yeah. Thank you. on all your success. Thank you. And I know you're impacting a lot of lives and um, that's incredible. Happy to be here, my man. No, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. We'll see you at the top.